some noise for yourself if you're feeling good, man. You're feeling good. This needs to be the proudest day to be black. Every day moving forward need to be the proudest day to be black because you got to lead by example. That's the only way you will be taken serious in this world. Lead by example. Treat yourself the way that you think people should treat others, not just how they should treat you, all right? Let's have fun, guys. Uh. I say gold all in my chain. I say gold all in my ring. I say gold all in my watch. I say don't believe me, just watch, nigga, nigga. Don't believe me, just watch. I say, don't believe me, just watch. Nigga, 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 don't believe me, just watch. I say, don't believe me, just watch. I say, gold all in my chain. I say, gold all in my ring. I say, gold all in my watch. It's don't believe me, just watch. Nigga, 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 don't believe me, just watch. I say, don't believe me, just watch. Nigga, 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 don't believe me, just watch. I say, don't believe me, just watch. I say, this ain't for no fuck, nigga. You a real nigga, then fuck with me. This one for the hood niggas and hipster bitches that shop at Lenny's. I say, dark skinned, light skinned, Asian and white women. Hype beasts, we know about you. Don't buy shoes unless they're popular for the hoes. My nigga, that's pussy popping that magic city. You got the strong. My nigga, then come match that shit with me, smoking mid. My nigga, then don't pass that shit to me. This one for my niggas and bitches about that money. I say, gotta love Chester Bridge, them bad hoes at Onyx. I don't fuck with no snitches, so don't tell me who telling. I say, this one for them colleges, them bad hoes at Spelman. Shout out to them freshmen. On Instagram, straight flexing. I say, pop to Molly, I'm sweating. Pop to Molly, I'm sweating. Mama always told me, boy, count your blessings. So in God, I trust. So I kept counting them Franklins. I'm too fly, you know this. Let me give your ass a checklist. One gold watch, two gold chains, six gold rings, it's nothing. OG join them hot socks, no shirt on, I'm stunned. And this song for them fuck niggas who hating on you this summer. Talk shit behind your back, but won't say shit in public. Fuck gold all in my chain. Gold all in my right. Gold all in my watch. Don't believe me, just watch, nigga, nigga, nigga. Don't believe me, just watch. Don't believe me, just watch. I say, don't believe me, just watch, nigga, 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 don't believe me, just watch. Hey, Amen. It's a beautiful day to be black every day. You gotta understand that your influence is crazy when your skin color is this. Don't be that. Don't be that. Be who you wanna be. Be who you wanna be. You can be more than a coon. You can be more than that. You can be more than anything that anybody think about you. That's on God. Welcome back to 80 Vibes, I'm Ray. You just saw Trinidad James perform All Go Everything. So to keep that going, we're gonna make a golden mule. We're gonna start with some champagne simple syrup, which is literally equal parts champagne, whatever you choose to use, and sugar. Some lime juice, a little pineapple Jamaican beer, and some Hennessy. And 
And the most important part, you want to give it a taste. Stay tuned for more with Trinidad James and 80 Vibes. God damn it, it needs more cowbell. Whole lot of gang shit going on. Say what? It's a whole lot of gang shit. A going on. Whole lot of gang shit. A going on. Do me a favor, man. Get real funky one time for all the black people. For all the black folks. For all the black people. Okay, that one was for the black people. Now I need one for the black folks. Okay, that's for the black folks, all right. But can the Negroes get some? I fuck with that. I fuck with that. All right, okay. Y'all on y'all shit. Let me see. Give me something for the African Americans. I can live with that. I can live with that. Do you have anything that you might could spare for the so-called black man? Oh, I like that one. Yeah, the so-called black man with Negroid features. He got Negroid features. do this one for the most important black body part man if you don't give me something for that big shiny ass nose niggas be having niggas don't embrace that nigga nose man give me something for that nigga nose something for right now how about some for them black ass elbows oh an elbow black for them black ass elbows for a lot but I need one more thing one more thing and I'm gonna keep it real smooth for y'all I need this for all the black ass people that get ashy they get ashy they get ashy when you don't put on no lotion we get ashy we get ashy we get ashy we ain't put on no lotion That was playing cause a nigga was in a hurry. Ran out of the house with no lotion on. Woo! 
everybody at the child support office going to like that one. Blue this episode Chew. is sponsored by Blue Chew. My name is Carlos Miller. Bluechew.com. Trust me. At this point, you already know. It's people asking me, man, what that Blue Chew do? Blue Chew brings you the first chewable with the same FDA approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis. And it's a sexual stimulant. Now, it's not, it's not going to cure any ailments or anything like that. But it will have you making sweet, sweet love <laughs> to your lady. If you can benefit from more confidence where it counts, Blue Chew is the fastest and easiest way to enhance your performance. These pills are amazing. Go check them out at BlueChew.com. If you could use a confidence boost or you just want to feel like your old self again, trust your mans. Use the promo code. It's only $5, man. You can try it for 5 Dollars, go online, bluechew.com. You can go right on your phone. That's blue, B L U E, chew, C H E W dot com. Hey man, make sure you hit that website and use their promo code. I just want you to see what all the hype is about. You get what I'm saying? Trust me on this. Use the promo code, get your first shipment for free. 85 South. I put that on everything. Times is hard out here. You feel me? <laughs> hey, man, welcome back to 80 Vibe. We got a very special guest in the house with us today. My man, you know him and you love him, Mr. Trinidad James. How you feel, brother? God bless. God bless. What's up, man? Man, first of, first of all, we would like to say thank you for stopping through the trap house and blessing us. Fuck it right, you know OG. So, from the mixtape circuit. And you went worldwide, and you you put you made a brand of yourself, man. We're proud of you. We're proud of your success. Cause I remember personally getting your first CD at the Athlete's Foot at South Lake South Lake Mall. Amen. I bought some joints, and then I saw your shit up there. I was like, man, what the hell, bro, got going on? And I got the CD, and I was like, I fuck with the CD. You know what I'm saying? But you know, you all gold. That's the way you know when that one took off and all that Amen. shit. So, but you still had a lot of shit on there that I feel like probably got overlooked. I feel like you came like too early. Right. You was a little before your time, bro. Right. You came out with a whole with a whole swag and your your influence is still felt because people still sampling. You know what I'm saying? Your Amen. song. Yes, and sir. I see your name coming up and writing credits and shit. So you still a very rev. He's you still know, a mogul now. You know what I'm saying? You 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 very you have a presence in the music industry and I want I want you to speak on how you built yourself and how you were able to last so long as an independent artist but still have mainstream success? I think the first thing is that I came in on my own two feet compared to like, I didn't have no big homies or no role models or like somebody that I was depending on to make me pop it. Right. I wasn't depending on popping. Right. I was depending on saying what I had to say. Right. Right. You know, so the, the fame, you know, it's, I don't think it's anybody, you know, when they see this interview, um, if you go do your research, I don't think it's any artist that we love now or ever loved where we got a chance to see when people found out about me, when you got my CD at the store, you know, um, when I was giving out stores on the right. top of the underground, right. giving out CDs at the Ginza, you know, um, I wasn't, I was just starting. Right. I was just, it wasn't like I had this past, like, you know, I used to rap in this group right. back in middle school. Like I didn't, I didn't do that. You know, um, I decided to make the decision um, the year of 2012 to really lock in to do music and by 2013, the whole world truly knew my name. Right. And um, that type of success usually puts a lot of our brothers and sisters in the grave right. or completely in a place where it's like, do you see him? You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's just like they, they just gone outside. Let me ask you this, because mm -hmm. I've never heard you say nothing negative about no nigga in this game. Like, I've seen you go on interviews and they ask you At about all. where people have said shit and they try to get you to respond and you'll still say some shit like, I fuck with that nigga, I like that nigga music, and mm -hmm. you never played into that. Is there anything you could tell the new artists up and coming who like build their new shit on the beef and you know, the back and forth and shit? Would you like to speak on that? Yeah, um, the reason why that worked for me is because when I think of the definition of what a, a real nigga is, right? I just define it by my life. And I think about every day that I spent on top of the underground, working at that store I worked at, then when I was hustling in the street, right. doing my thing. I thought about all the music that I listened to during those times, especially the year 2010. You know, I remember listening to 
So, because all you can do in the store is listen to music. Right. And I was managing and running the store, so I was controlling the music, the cash register, everything. You know, the shipping and buying, everything. And I, I can't, I feel like you can't be a true fan of somebody and then make up fake beef with them. Right. You know, it just, it just never <laughs> felt right. So, you know, when a brother or a sister or anybody say something about me who has never came in contact with me, I know that you're talking about what they portray and not what you know. Right. And to the younger artists, you know, um, they're going to do it their way, and I think that they should do it their way. You know, it's, it's always a right way to do things, but, you know, they keep showing us new things, too. Right. And that's what I love about the young people. You know, um, when it comes to all the beef that they get themselves into, that beef comes with consequences. And I think that they know that. Right. I just think that at this point in time in life, we have allowed social media to become so godlike right. that is like, you know what? I got to do it. Right. Right. Forget it. You know, and um, once you once you realize that and you see what um, you up against, you know, it's our good morals and our hard lessons versus YouTube and versus Instagram and versus Twitter and versus all these social media um, activities that put the people who are doing ignorant shit at the top right. and the She's people that crazy. saying something that makes some sense completely at the bottom. Right, right, right. So it's no balance. Or it's not even acknowledged. Exactly. So it's kind of like for a young person, you know, you 14, 15, 16, you know, no older than the age of 20, the thing that shows you how to take care of your family because you always got to look at what you're showing and then that person in taking that and then taking it back to what they're actually living in. Right. So if your family is struggling and you come from a single parent home because a lot of us do, um, you have to figure out, hey man, all that cool shit that I'm even saying right now, that's all fine and dandy, but my little brothers and sisters and my mama got to eat or whatever, so I got to do what I got to do. And if that's me, Chasing clout and me starting fake beef, uh -huh. then that's what I got to do. And what I got to say to that brother or sister who is doing that or going through that, if you know that that's your reality, do what's best for your family. Right. Right. But the bigger point is understand when you need to change and right. cut that bullshit. That, right. That's the real. Right? You could start off an idiot, but how you start is not how you're supposed to finish if you exactly. started on some bullshit. Exactly. Right. Because it will catch up with you. Exactly. And I think we, I don't think it's anybody that has ever been on the bullshit full time and have made it all the way to see the age of 50 yeah. or successful. It's just, I don't think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like 33 is, is a tap out. Right, right, and I'm just giving you an extra three years. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. Okay, I, I, got, go I, got, I, got, a real, I got a real question. Because, you know, by me doing music, I, I always study artists. Amen. You Amen. dig what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So I studied the game and I know after you, you hit, you still got accolades. Correct. You dig what I'm saying? So. <clears throat> Behind closed doors, how did you grasp or what type of mode did you have to get into? Because I know you heard all the uh, one hit wonders, mm -hmm. all that pat, 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 pat. Mm -hmm. But for you to put that to the side, stay motivated, stay having faith, like what is that groundwork like? You feel what I'm saying? Because everybody think that we not human or we don't want to go choke them off of. We're machine. Boy, you feel what I'm saying? Feel anything. Like we don't feel nothing. Yeah, exactly. like, like we don't cry. You right. dig what I'm saying? So I feel like what is that stage that, that made you like really just grab to the music and say, I'm not going to listen to them. I'm going to keep going. Um, I think that it was when I signed my, when I signed, there's a couple things. The first thing is when I signed my first big deal with Def Jam. Right. You know, um, it was a big deal at the time. And I remember um, I had explained to the labels at the time what type of man I was, where it's like, I don't like to put my business out there like that. I like to just move because I know personally, I got a lot of work to do. I knew that coming into the game because I had just started the year right, prior. Right. So I know as a man, no matter what the consumer think, I'm up here doing shows with Drake and 2 Chains and blah, 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 doing All-Star. I got work to do. Right. I don't care what y'all think. I knew that. But right then in that time when I signed the deal, the next day, somebody blasted it out about my deal and everything. I was like, oh, man, nobody could be trusted, even the people at the top. And it really threw me off because it's like, if you could believe in me now when I ain't shit. Right then how can you not hold faith, have faith, or keep, I realized it was for them, their mm -hmm. selfish gain. Right, it's so, beneficial. It's beneficial. So when I realized that even the people at the top at clout chasers, just like the people coming up, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I gotta make sure that I'm saying this for me. So that was the mm -hmm. first. Make sure you not changing. That, that was the first, because I was like, if I become like the people talking, 
or the people that I'm trying to do business with, then I stand to lose because that really was going against what my actual morals were. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? And then the second thing was um, organically not being scared to jump into something. Right. Now, no, I, anything I ever did in life, I never knew how to do it before I did it. When I worked at the Waffle House, when I did landscaping, when I ran the cash register, when I worked at that clothing store, I never, the only thing I ever knew how to do was put some clothes on. That's the only thing I could ever say, like, oh, I know what I'm doing here. I felt comfortable always putting some clothes on, no matter right. what the era it was. Right. But anything else in life, I just went into it and did it. So I was like, everything I went through growing up in Atlanta, when I moved from Trinidad, I lived in New York, I lived in Florida. Everything I went through in Atlanta, though, because those were the real years, those are the things that I used, and I just recycled it over again into the industry. And I was like, well, hey, you know, I went through a couple years of doing music, doing music, putting out mixtapes, learning my videos, and understanding this. And I was like, all right, okay, I understand to being an artist a little bit more. And then I got out of, I went through a long, uh, I went through seven months of depression and writer's block in 2014, mm -hmm. or whatever. And that was really tough. You know, mm -hmm. I felt that I was gonna die, you know, because. When you can't, when you decide to make creating mm -hmm. for a living, right. where you got to make jokes or you got to make songs, speak on it. You got to create Whoa. something in order to take care of your little one. I don't right. have a little one, here, but I know you do. Right. Paulo, you might right. too. You know what I'm saying? It's mentally dry. Then it becomes kind of crazy when your mind not spinning right. or not working. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, after about you know four months of just black every day, black head, black, 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 black. My mind just going black every day. I'm, just, I'm trying to blow money to get the vibe. I'm right. doing this, I'm doing trying that. Trying to come up with a story. Um, and, you know what I'm saying? Because I can't lie. Right. I didn't want to lie about, my, about the music I wanted to make. Right. I didn't want to lie. I was feeling some type of way about the, how the industry treated me after 2013 when I got into this, this some shit about the stuff I said about New York. Right. And how, you know, Atlanta music and New York music and how people turned their back on me who I thought, you know, I, I, I always give up people the real me, right. right? You know what I'm saying? I really try my best to give you the most, the most respect I can give you because I would love for you to give me the chance for that respect. Right. You know, when we get there, we get there. But initially, I'm giving you enough respect for you to give me the same. Mm -hmm. And so I don't hold no um, judgment against the people who turned their back for me, who I only met once or twice. Right. But it was people who I really, really spent time with giving them the real me that right. turned their back on me. You know, coming into 2014 and all that really built up to that bad depression because I was just like, this is crazy. So I, black, 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 black. And when I left, what, what actually happened was I helped an artist in Atlanta um, who I know from back in the day who had been rapping before me, way better rapper than me, right. all that. You know, he was working on his project in the studio that I had rented out, and I just had to rent it. I had a studio rented out for months, and I just let my partners go record that because I couldn't record none. So I was like, y'all just put on my tab. Right. Go record, go record whenever y'all want to. And um, they, I went, I, I got up one day, and I, I felt a little inspired to go to the studio. Right. And when I went to the studio, I ain't come up with nothing. But before I was getting ready to leave, I got a little disappointed. You know, when I was getting ready to leave, I went into one of the rooms that I had booked and I seen him in there mm -hmm. and he was paying for his own session. So I respected that. He didn't want, no, he didn't want my tab. Right. I would have, so I went to see what he was talking about, what he was, you know, what he was doing. And when I, when I went in there and I listened to the music, he was telling me what was going on. And, you know, and I, and I felt something to me like, man, help him. Right. I, 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 if you could see where somebody is missing the turn, right. and all you gotta do is like, man, get over a little bit, man. Right. I would have, then do it. And I did that. And it got, it led us to me helping create his first like real project. Mm -hmm. And when I did that, I, I seen how good he felt. And when I seen how good he felt, it showed me how good I felt right. inside. And then it showed me like, oh, I see what's going on. I'm thinking too much about myself. Yeah. That's why I'm, that's why I'm feeling this way. And as soon as I said that to myself when I went home that night, the next day, my partner in LA called me and a person I recorded a song with at the top of the year before I went into my depression in February. Right. In January, I recorded, I was working on my album at the time. And he hit me, he's like, hey bro, if you come out here on the flight, I got a fire ass camera team that's willing to shoot our video for free. I had to get out of Atlanta because I was I was hitting the ceiling. Right. Mm -hmm. I love this city so much. I went to school here. This city did so much. Get the on. I had to get on. I had to get on. I had to listen that to what the on. universe was telling me. Right. And it wasn't that I. It wasn't nothing about hating where I was from. It was kind of more of I'm no good to y'all no more because I can't be good to myself. 
And so I went to LA. And when I went to LA, it just opened up because I just needed a bigger playing ground mm -hmm. to try shit. Mm -hmm. And once people started hearing that I was in LA, that people, all these people who would never hit me when I was in Atlanta. They like, what's up, what you like, gonna do? Pull up, come, yeah. through, come through this, like do this, do this. And right around that same time, the Bruno Mars situation popped off. And mind you, I didn't know what he was gonna do when he hit me during my depression. It was like, um, yo, I really love, I'll go everything, blah, blah, blah. I was so depressed, I basically hung up on my business. I don't care. Like, because you be so depressed, you don't trust nobody. Right, right. right. Because I couldn't even trust myself no more. Right. Once again, if you can't create, then why are you living? Right. I remember asking myself that many days. Why am I alive, God, if I can't create? Because that's the only thing I know how to do no more. I, I feel like I'll be killing myself if I went back to what I used to do. Right. Because I know what that come with. Right. Or whatever. I don't want to do that no more. Went to LA. The door started opening. Then to get back to your question or what you initially asked of like, you know, what made you grasp on the things and stuff like that. Uh -huh. That's when I just got to just trying things. Everything that I dropped the ball with in Atlanta, I said, I'm going to do my charities. I'm going to do this. I'm, I ain't making no excuses. I ain't never dependent on another man or another label to do the things that's in my heart that I want to do. I can go do it. I got to do it. I got the money. I don't care. I got the name. Use it. Figure it out. And that's what I did. Or whatever, and that opened the door for me to get into writing sessions. <coughs> or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Because I never used, I never used to write for nobody before 2015. Right. I'll write everything, keep it for myself, keep it for myself because I had to. I was catching catch up. Niggas been writing songs way longer than me. Right, right. I, had, I was like, I can't give y'all niggas nothing. What did I learn from when I worked with my partner? Stop being selfish. Give Be selfless. Give, give it away. away. Yeah. Because if you give what? away something that is actually good for the universe, the universe gonna give it back right. to you. Not on your timing. No. But sometime around the way exactly. when you need it. And that's how they started Tenfold. coming, man. I went to two years of writing records for people mm. or whatever. Nothing. 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 I was like, man, God damn, bro. That's right. so hard. Like, I done got better at writing at the time. Right. When I write, I'm like, bro, I'm getting people the heat. Uh. I'm trying to write for this movie, that movie. You know what I'm saying? It started with Rihanna. Failed. Went to Fast and the Furious, that particular movie at the time. Failed. I whatever. Just kept failing, failing, failing. And then um, I got defeated a little bit. I whatever. But in the fact that in the midst of getting defeated, it got my pen even sharper. Right. So I put it back into my music now because now I had things to say. Right. And that's how I kept doing it. I used something I tried that didn't work to take it back to what I know worked. Right. And then let that inspire something new that came along the way. And then coming into 2018, bam, this one, this one, I would have a platinum record that, you know what I'm saying, writing for other people. Right. I, would, I just didn't quit at it, man. You know, yeah. and the acting the same way. You know what I'm saying? I never auditioned. Or whatever, it just um, when acting became available, um, SAG, you know SAG, mm -hmm. or whatever, they um, hip hop became so thing. When hip hop became they number they one, it. Right. They it was like, hey, wait, 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 wait. Every agent got asked to, if you got an artist that you book music for and you think that they can kind of act, right. tell them, give them, do we send, do we give them a chance to come to auditions? Mm -hmm. Or whatever. And it started with Empire, failed. And it was, that kind of hurt me a little bit because the lady, the, the casting coach lady uh, who um, you know, I did my thing with, mm -hmm. you know, she, she was like, man, you ever did this before? I was like, no, I ain't never did it before. She's like, man, you, you're really good at this. You know, and that made me feel good. Like, I'm like, oh, right. we in right. there. Right. You know what I'm saying? Then I'm like, oh, this is a black show. Yeah. I'm a nigga. I was like, come on, I'm that. Nothing. I, you know what I'm saying? They, they cut me. And I, and I was like, damn, man, you know, that shit hurt. You know, because um, when you in this industry, you, you always think that just because, you know, we're the same color, it's going to just roll mm -hmm. or whatever. But it's business. You know what I'm saying? It ain't nothing against them brothers right. and sisters. It ain't you know nothing personal. It's it ain't personal. You know what I'm saying? Like, Tarija, don't, Tarija, she don't even know me. Right. Taraji don't even know me. You know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't personal. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just about how you coming in the dough mm -hmm. right, right, or whatever. Right. So then that changed my perspective of how I came into the dough or whatever. I allowed myself to only go do things where it sounded more like what I wanted to do. And I was like, I only want to meet the director. That's the only person I want to meet. I ain't trying to meet no casting lady. If the director don't want to meet me, then I'm cool. Because it don't make no sense. Because you ain't going to get me right. through somebody else explaining me. Right. You got to meet me right. to understand me. Talk your shit. Or whatever. So I missed out on a lot of things. I missed out on a lot of things that I probably could have got a chance to audition for. Right. But every one that I got to meet the director, I got it. So Pitch Perfect, Uncut Gems, um, Aladdin, mm -hmm. um, uh, anything, anything that I got. 
and I got credits for, I got a chance to meet the, the head honcho <coughs> to really show myself, you know? And, and like to, answer, to fully answer your question, is just truly taking advantage of the things I didn't know. Right. Just jumping into it. Just I want have faith and just going crazy. Go for it. Go for it. Have faith. Hey, we really appreciate you speaking on the mental health and all of that, too. You know, at a time like this, it's definitely, you know, these things need to be touched on and highlighted, man. Let's talk about all go everything. Yes. yes. Did you know that was the one? No, sir. No, sir. No, Ooh. sir. Um, when you, if you come up the way I come up and the way I listen to music, you wouldn't know that that's the one because yeah. no tempo was like that tempo. Let me ask you this before was, you get into the story. Because, you know, knew. we fuck around with the music and fly, you know, especially. Sometimes you'll have a song, you know, like that. Mm -hmm. As an artist that you sit on, you be like, I don't know. Like, you iffy. Like, what was the process of releasing it? Mm -hmm. How long did you have it before, you know what I mean, you decided this is the one? So some cool things about it was that that was the last song I did for the project. Word. Hell yeah, no. That's last crazy. Song, you know what I'm saying? And the crazy thing I said to That's myself, crazy. you got to talk to the universe, but when you talk to the universe, I'm reading a book right now, um, it's about the law of attraction. It's from this lady, Esther and John Hicks. It's, okay. it's like a lot of people will block the things that they ask for because they don't keep believing in it. Nice. They'll ask for it, and then it don't come within a week or two, and then they start thinking about the things, how things were. The mm -hmm. order is in. Yeah, once you put the order in, you got to keep believing keep that no, I want the new car. I want the new car. Mm -hmm. You can't want the new car, ask the universe for a new car, and then keep thinking about the old car that you got right now. Right. Because you're blocking your own blessing. You gotta go right. be crazy. Or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So I remember, when I think of it now, I didn't realize this at the time, I remember saying to myself, like, dang, I got females welcome. I was like, ooh, them folks all around the world are gonna like this, I yeah. think. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Asian, white folks, you know? I remember that shit. I don't know, I was like, Asian. Well, you know, it's I different. Like or whatever. I had given no fucks for like my hip hop heads who don't yeah, want some yeah. real, real. I whatever, you know what I'm saying? I got that for them. For my drug people, I got my, uh, my Molly song or whatever. Just before I go everything, I had my Molly song or whatever. And I had my crew on this song called Team Vacation. So I got my crew, I got the drugs, I got the whites, and I got. Um, around the world, mm -hmm. but I ain't had enough for my niggas. And so I remember asking my homeboy, I was like, man, you got some beats for me? You got something I can get? Or what I used to get his throwaway beats, mm -hmm. or whatever. So he sent, me a process, folder. Yeah. he sent me a folder, his throwaway beats, and that beat was in it, or whatever. So when I pressed play on it, or whatever, I was like, man, it's kind of cool, or whatever. And then it just, um, it took me a couple days just being at work, writing and writing, I wanted to just write the realities of what was going on, you know what I'm saying? So when right. I said this for my niggas, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm thinking, like I'm working on the underground. Right. So I'm selling clothes to niggas that's trapping on Broad Street, the AUC, people that work in all them buildings right there around downtown, across the Georgia State, mm -hmm. yeah. or whatever, like all these people are my niggas. I done, you know, DJ Scream, who was shopping with Spins, the Travis Porter. All them niggas. You know, um, Whole all city. The, Atlanta you know, shit. Atlanta, like these are my downtown niggas. Downtown shit. Downtown shit. You know what I'm saying? I was a real Eat downtown nigga. Whoop! The niggas who work at Walters. You know, the niggas get jumped. You know what I'm saying? Every the day. Facts. <laughs> niggas will get jumped across the street from the police station. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's the police stations right here. Young niggas on right, skateboards all day, day and shit. Wild yeah. shit. You know what I'm saying? So, um, right, you know, that, that was my truth, man. Right. You know, that's why it's one verse. I, whatever, I was like, man, I covered everything that I needed to cover for everything that was real to me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, me working at the Waffle House, I worked at the Waffle House on Chester Bridge it's down the street from Onyx, that's on Chester Bridge. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. everything is a reality of the things that I've been through up to that time point. Right. You know what I'm saying? And um, the, it's always surprising to you when you put out, I realize now, of course, when you put out a visual of the song and you look at all these people who don't live your struggle that relate to it. You know what I'm saying? Right. When you go to the show and it's like, you know, I go do a college show and it's like all these suburban kids that come from great families and, you know, they going, saying the same thing I'm saying and saying it with passion. Right. You know, it, it, it just, it, it's, music speaks an unspoken language, man. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, until, until you really, really you know, hone in and really get it, you know, it's hard for you to know what's going to be the one. Right. You know, and that's why I stopped thinking about what's going to be the one. Mm -hmm. And I just got into that, that mode of like, bro, I just want to create. I just want to create. And if you can relate, thank you. Because I, I realized that you don't want to just appeal to one thing right. or whatever, you know. And then you learn about the labels, too. You know, they're looking at things that check off boxes right. or whatever. And those boxes sometimes defeat your morals. Right. Or whatever, so you gotta decide you what you want. You know what I'm saying? You gotta figure it out. My favorite part 
of all go everything ain't even a lyric. It's just when you say nigga, nigga, nigga. Like that was black history. Nigga, nigga, nigga. I haven't that heard that? I haven't heard nigga, 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 nigga used nigga. that many times in a row. Like That's you unlocked so a third parallel <laughs> when you said that. When you said nigga, nigga, I stopped. I was like, whoa. That nigga need to listen. <laughs> They had ad libs on the radio. Now see, that's the thing because I, I didn't heard a double nigga, which has extreme power. Extreme power. But when you doubled up a double up, nigga, that was on. That was like some twist shit. Though. It was like, don't believe me, just watch, nigga, nigga, nigga. What he say right there? Hold up, whoa, whoa, nigga, nigga. That, do you know that that part alone is a bar? You're no, I didn't know that. I didn't know that at the time. Of I didn't know that. I didn't know Even that at the time. old school niggas were like that. that fuck with that Trinidad James. Amen. Nigga, nigga, so, nigga. So when you was in the studio, like, what the hell made you be like, nigga, nigga, nigga? That's, you know, that's really interesting you ask that question. Nobody ever asked me that question. Dude, right. that shit, that's one what of the, the hardest parts like, of that whole song. When that bitch came on, nigga, nigga, nigga. <sighs> nigga, nigga, nigga. I think that, I think from the standpoint of that we, me not subconsciously, me not knowing, because I didn't know. I'm just it doing came it. out. It's just, you do it. And I was talking to my people because that's how we talk to each other. It's a chant. You know what I'm saying? It's for every nigga. You spoke to the that nigga, nigga spirit nigga, nigga, when nigga, you nigga. said that. Nigga, nigga, nigga. You know, I realized that. You know, after like the if fact, you listen you know, to the song, like, it's a, it's a chant. And this one for my niggas. Exactly. It's fight music because it was a fight. Downtown was crazy. And then that when you hit them with the shout out crazy. to them strippers. Man, come on. You was really on some pimp you, shit. You know what? You know what? I think you the first nigga who shed light on the scrippers. The script club went up after you said, shout out to them scrippers. Nigga was like, what? So stock went up. Stock did go up. Stock I ain't, I ain't. <laughs> stock go up. Nigga don't even know. Stock they Bitch, stop playing. Trinidad got y'all hold that $20 Come dances. On. Y'all was $5. I don't know where that shit went from. Nigga, nigga, nigga. Hey. <laughs> y'all shit went up to $20. Some more of the realest shit in that song. Pop the molly, I'm sweating. Woo! I was on drugs then, bro. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> that shit just got me flat back. Don't do that. <laughs> you see the effect? Yeah, yeah. That's exactly yeah. why I said Pop that. the molly. Nigga, we used to be in club like, woo! It's hey, Bill Heads who been waiting on that part. You see what? how you see how like, just just like how you see you shout out all your niggas. It's parts of that song that every kind of nigga gravitate. Really Amen. Different. And it, the, the, what, what made it make sense for me is that, you know, I went through those experiences. Right. You know, so I, and those, I was like, that was me giving, that's the emotional rap or whatever, you know, that's the emotion of right. what I'm going through. Right. You know what I'm saying? From Everybody was on it. And I, said, I was like, man, this is crazy. Because I remember the nigga who put me on, he's dead now. Right. Our pizza's soul. Damn. You know what I'm saying? I remember that and I was like, damn. Right. What is this? Exactly. I thought we had to block lock with, with weed. I was like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Dog food, dope, y'all do y'all thing. Oh, yeah, whatever, right, you know what right. I'm saying? I come with a whole other thing. Oh, whatever. But then this got introduced, you know, Molly got introduced to us, and I was like, God damn. Shit, boy. Man, OG. I was like, man, this is different. Because it's been around. Mm -hmm. MDMA been around, you know what I'm saying? But you know, it got to come to our culture for us to Understand put that it. cool on it. Right. Put that, uh, we're the best marketers on earth. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, and they're, that's what that was, man. man. That's, that's what that was, man. Well, look here, man. Over here at 80 Vibes, man, this is just a platform oh. that we created on the offset of our platform to invite people that we fuck with and respect and admire, man. And you are extremely part of the culture. We got so much respect for everything that you do. If you ever want to kick it, vibe. It's always your career. Some shit, bro. Man, man, thank we you. Got it. Before we get out of here, though, we got to get into the new shit, man. So introduce man. introduce the new one. Black On, man. Black On is the new single. And, um... You know, I've realized, I've, I've heard this. We black on. <laughs> oh, that black on. Hey, man, you know, um, I've heard this a, a lot of times in my career yeah. where it's like right message, wrong messenger, referring to myself. Mm. You know, where it's like I can't listen to the nigga who did all go everything tell me something real. You know, and um, that's crazy that you can't come out of that. Yeah, it's that and box. it's real. I I, I don't <clears throat> when when things are real, I've learned to not deny it. Mm -hmm. Just fight your fight. Right. Fight your fight because if my intentions is right, 
you'll realize one day. And if the people who don't realize, they never were going to realize. They don't want to. Right. You know, and so black owned is for us by us. You know, and black owned businesses is something that I've learned more and more because I wasn't good at it at first. Right. You know, supporting our businesses. You know, right. during Black History Month this year, I did a different black owned restaurant every day. Right. You know, and I learned a lot of lessons. A lot of lessons that we need to learn as black owners, you know, where, you know, just because you black, that don't mean I'm supposed to support it. You get the service got to be right. The quality got to be right. Right. Because a lot of people use our name as an excuse exactly. for our dollar. Right. Mm -hmm. And I can't go for that. Right. You know, I want to make sure that that's what this single is about is making sure that we stand for a standard. You know what I'm saying? Like set the stand standard. For the standard for, for, yeah. for ourselves. Exactly. Right. Like once we set the standard of how we treat each other and how our restaurants and right. our businesses and our product is, then other people will learn to put that same respect. Because until then, you a nigga. Exactly. And a lot of people think because it's a black business, you're not supposed to criticize. But, you know, that's all up to the consumer. We got to be able to give criticism yeah, to exactly. help each other. Yeah, don't criticize and be like, man, fuck this business, boom, 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 boom. Right. Like, if you come out with that type of energy, right. then you're trying to kill your brother. Exactly. Right? But if you, help I, you know what I'm saying? Like, help him find a solution. Like, go talk to the owner. Exactly. Go talk to the manager. Like, hey, yeah. pull him to the side. Like, hey, man, look. This Ask that. for a solution you know before the criticism. Solutions, mm -hmm. man. That's right. what. That's my main agenda. Right. For, till the, uh, the good man say he want to take me off here. It's find the solutions. I don't believe in excuses. Right, man. Black on. Black on. You smoke weed, though, though. Gotta smoke some weed. Oh, okay. I'm about to say, nigga, 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 nigga. I'm about to say, nigga. Hey, man, well, we appreciate you coming through here, vibing with us. And like I said, you always welcome, bro. You got much love over here. We family, brother. You talking vibes. about underground, nigga? Underground. You better, boy, you will get killed at the train. 80 train. vibes with the man, Trinidad James himself. Let's go. You bitch. Look, we got some new merch in. Man, come on, man. That ain't that big ass jacket, man. That jacket oh, way too big. Bigger than a You know, we got all sides. Come on, but these are the ones I ordered, though. This is my oh, side. Oh, no, the perfect side, man. Where, where they can find them at? 85crown.com. Mmm. <laughs> know what time it is? Get your, get your shit right now. <laughs> People been asking about these jerseys. The jerseys have been restocked. Uh -oh. Make sure you hit the website. At 85apparel.com, man, we're giving you $25 off every order of $100 or more. And if you're looking for the sweaters, the sweaters are still up. Yep, custom fit, huh? We got them in all sizes, small, medium, large, extra large, bigger than them. Come on. You know it. For this next record, it's called Black Owned. And before I even started, I had some names that I seen that I wanted to save so I could make sure that I say them. Tony McCade. Nina Pop, Monica Diamond, Leland Polanco, Malaysia Booker, B Love Slater, Ashanti Carmen, Bailey Reeves. These are some of the black trans victims that also lost their life to police brutality. We all in this together. If you possess this skin color and you want this situation to get better, you can't use classism to your favor. That won't help the situation. If you're gonna support every black owned business, you can't leave people out because they not to your standard or they not in the right neighborhood. We gotta find ways to adjust to each other and help each other out. Because why are they in that position? Because we left them sometimes. Sometimes you gotta turn around and figure out, oh, how can I help the person behind me? but only if it matters to you. We can't force you to be black just because you're black. We can't force you to care just because you should. Let's do it. Black owned. I gotta get comfortable, talk my shit. Shit getting ugly, mask on, nigga. 
shit get crazy when that cash go, nigga. Everybody got the answers. I ain't asked y'all niggas. Give a fuck who got now, nigga. Now you got next. I ain't at and niggas, bitch. Boy, I'm at you niggas next. Niggas living for the limelight and dying for success. I feel like Virgil Rambo in this VUV vest. Niggas wish I would just die. I be making niggas vex. I be tripping Carson daily. Make your bitch make a request. I never say I'm hungry, bitch, unless I'm in Budapest. Eating good, nigga. Counting up on the new check. Chilling with my niggas. Shooting pool. Eating Ruth Chris and drama corner pocket. Hit your ass with a pool stick. These niggas is softer than a condom from wreck. I'm learning new judge, nigga. Might build a duplex. Humble even though my rings look like a roof mix. These fake ass niggas break fast like a cute bitch. Bitch, this is shining, boy. I feel like Kubrick. I don't associate with niggas who don't do shit. Nigga, you just doing it. I do this shit. Fuck that advance, nigga. I blew that shit. I went and got another and I blew that shit. I work for what I want rather than lie on my dick. And if you don't feel the same, nigga, you ain't shit. Matter of fact, I don't like you, nigga, or your bitch. Or your badass kids who you won't teach shit. Now he got a contract and he gon' get shit. Why you gotta say that? Cause he don't know shit. Except for busting guns, fuck the cops and lippin' vicious lives up. Skipping class, sliding by, he got a wicked jump shot. Ship stuck on his shoulder cause his brother got popped. And Papa was a Rolling Stone, fuck all that We trying to make it on the cover, nigga, how about that? Nigga, we go broke because we don't buy black Got the crackers toe tapping when we giving them racks I'm in the booth right now plotting this Michael Berry jacket A rapping contradiction, nigga, I just gotta have it I got shoes you never seen, but I know it's gonna match it I be selling niggas confidence and tripping with a passion, uh Dressed to kill, you can call me an assassin Need no extra feels or no baby mama action He black and confident, ooh, they like that he ain't got no kids, ooh, they like that These women give me eyes when I'm passing them, boy I be giving niggas tips, they be asking me, boy And these niggas get dressed, I'm gassing them, boy I say, you should see my closet look like Fashion Week, boy <laughs> Pull up skirt, hop out, these niggas annoy it You ain't the only one that can afford You're not the only name to make the tabloids You're just a guy, nigga, I'm that boy My YSL toes got a Cinderella glow My pinky finger look like an infinity stone That's a time stone, power stone, this shit get crazy I said this shit get crazy That's a time stone, power stone, this shit get crazy it go like this, I say back on nigga, black on nigga, shit getting ugly, mass on nigga, I say black on nigga, back on nigga, shit getting ugly, mass on nigga, I say black on nigga, back on nigga, shit getting ugly, mass on nigga, black on nigga, back on nigga, shit getting ugly, mass on nigga. Make sure that when you think about our brothers, and sisters that you see pop up on social media and they go viral because they just got their ass murdered. That ain't a game. We laugh to deal with the pain. I heard a brother say one time that that releases some shit in our endorphins to make us deal with the, with the situation. That's why we always laughing. But just because we laughing, that don't mean shit funny. Because I'm telling you, when somebody kill your cousin, when somebody kill your auntie, when somebody kill your sister, when somebody kill your daddy, your mama, you gonna know what's funny then, my brother, my sister. You gonna know. Don't let fake allies come into your culture and change up the perspective. Trust me, you gotta understand how the enemy move. You gotta move like the enemy, but know your purpose and know your cause, man. Peace.